بس ايه وكمان بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم my name is Anamir Fan and I'm student of fourth semester electrical engineering department today the topic of my presentation is related to the course that we were assigned yesterday that is statistics on RAM a course provided by MathWorks before proceeding I would like to uh, tell you about some something about statistics so it is basically a study that a discipline that concerns the collection, organization, analysis, interpretation, and presentation of data. Theory of statistics rely heavily on calculus, um, linear algebra, and probability theories. So this course is all about dealing with data that we deal in our daily lives, uh, such as analyzing the weather trends or uh, the phone usage um, graphs, or also we can use this statistics to make, uh, make uh, predictions using our observations. In this specific course, that is statistics on RAM, we'll be using an example and we'll be discussing the evolution of fringe uh, birds and uh, we will be um, talking about their change in beak length and beak depth. So the first section of this course is data visualization. Data visualization uh, is basically putting abstract numbers into a perspective that how your data will look like. In this course, we use three kinds of techniques in order to visualize our data. The number one is scatter plotting, the other one is histogram, and the third one is box chart. So scatter plotting, as you can see here, scatter plotting is about plotting your x and y values by using these dots or circles. And uh, it is useful in uh, it is this scatter plotting is very useful if you want to uh, find a relation between your x and y values or anything like that. The other one is histogram. It uses bins or buckets, as you can see. And uh, this, for me, this is the most common type uh, technique uh, for graphing. Uh, this should be kept in mind that this bin or bucket should not be too big or too small. The other one is box chart. As you can see, if I uh, take this graph as an example, so for me, 50% of the data lies here, the middle 50% lies here, and this box here in box chart represents this 50% of data of a graph. And we can find this, uh, I'll discuss the technique in order to find this 50% data in the coming slides, but we'll be using IQR for this technique. This lines, as known as whiskers, are the extreme values of this graph. And this circle here is the outlier, which is basically any observation made that is not very related to the other observations. This is IQR. In this, you subtract, IQ2 is here is the median. Um, and for finding IQR, you'll be subtracting Q2 from Q1 and you'll get your 50% of the middle data. So the next section of this course is descriptive statistics. And in order to proceed, we should first know that what these terms mean. So the number one is mean. It is the average of all the values, the sum of all the values. Median is the middle value of any graph. For example, this is the median here. And the graph will be symmetric if the mean and medium are equal. This is something common sense. Then we have minimum and maximum values. Um, these smallest values, minimum and the 
largest value here is the maximum. By using this, we can find, by using the relation of minimum and maximum, we can find the range of a graph, of an, any observation. Then we have st uh, STD, that is standard deviation. It is a measure of how far away your observations are from the mean. So it, it is basically in the category of the spread, spread of your observations. Then I've explained IQR. IQR is the um, middle 50% of your data. It explains these, it again explains the spread of the observations. Then we have skewness and kurtosis. Skewness is, both of them are related to the shape of the graph. Skewness is more related to the um, whether the information is accumulated on the right side or the left side, while kurtosis is mostly related to the tail of the graph, or is it uh, it has a long tail or is it heavily centered? So it is related to that. The other the, here you can see this is scatter plotting data visualization. Histograms, box plots. The other section of this is normal distributions. Any bell curved um, graph is normal distribution. It is also known as um, Gaussian distribution. This, this is a normal distribution. For example, if I want to make a graph of rolling several dice several times or doing anything I do in daily life, so I will have a normal distribution. Two important points in this subsection that were discussed in the course are PDF and CDF. So PDF is basically, it is related to the continuous uh, observations continuous graph and it is used to specify the probability of random variable falling within a particular range of values and pdf formula is used to calculate probabilities by evaluating the area under the curve and it should be kept in mind that the pdf is always equal to one this is the uh, command you'll use in order to find the pdf then we have cdf cdf is uh, it gives the probability that a random variable takes a value less than or equal to specified value. Both discrete and continuous values can be used. This is the command that will be used. The last section of this course is related to hypothesis testing or hypothesis modeling. Basically, it is a process that helps you May conclude if an observation about any population parameter is true or false. If you made an observation about any population parameter, so is it true or is it false? It helps you um, conclude that observation. So in this testing, you'll be making two hypotheses. Hypothesis is basically a statement related to the nature of the population. In this course, we made two observations, two hypotheses related to the beak length of the word fringe. The uh, first hypothesis is known as the null hypothesis, and the second one is the alternative. It should be kept in mind that the both the hypothesis idea should be different um, because they shouldn't be same because one of this will uh, come true and uh, here, the first null hypothesis is that there is no change in the beak lens. Means that according to this course, they're saying that from 1975 to 2012, the beak length of the bird finch has not evolved. Instead, in second hypothesis, that is the alternative hypothesis, it says that the beak length has changed. It has gotten smaller. So for this, for in order to find the correct uh, statement, a test is conducted in the uh, course and it is known as two sample test, TT test two, T test two. And uh, the test results 
will be a zero or a one. If uh, the test result is a one, it means that it rejects the hypothesis zero, that is the null hypothesis. And uh, it shows that the beaks have changed and vice versa. If the result is zero, it means that the hypothesis, the alternative hypothesis has been rejected. So by this, we can, may, uh, we can find the correct observation that we made. Before concluding my presentation, I would like you all to see one thing. This is a very helpful thing for all of us. And this is the summary of all the commands that were used in this course. One requirement for this course is the MATLAB on-ramp. You have to know the basics of MATLAB in order to do this course. So this is the summary. These are the commands that are used. I've explained all of them, I think. I've tried to at least. So this is it. Thank you so much.